Welcome back everybody to Operation Overhaul and today we're working on a 2011 Tahoe. It has the 5.3 with the AFM or DOD as some people like to call it and what we're going to be doing to it is doing the full AFM delete. I did buy a kit from Texas Speed. They're not a sponsor but I did get the full kit from them and we're going to be doing this over probably a couple videos so if you're interested in seeing how this is done stick with me and chum on. As you can see, I've already got the cover off this engine. To do this, you just pull straight up, and once you pull up, reach your hand under here and push down on this a little bit, and you can slide it out because they will get caught up in here. But the first thing we're going to do is remove this air tube right here, or the air intake. And to do this, it's only a hose clamp right here with a flat blade screwdriver. A connector and then you got some Torx bits that hold your uh, lid to your air box plus the hoses are held in right here as well forgot about that like I said on the bottom you have this clip right here that holds the hoses in you have to press in on either side of it through in the inside or you can use a small like pocket screwdriver to go through and it'll pop right out these are the screws and they are a t25 and this is your lid next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to take the serpentine belt off and disconnect the battery so to take the serpentine belt off you're going to need either a 15 millimeter wrench a serpentine belt tool or a wrench in a socket or a ratchet in a socket and you're going to push it towards the driver's side and there's your serpentine belt now on the ac there is a stretch belt on this right here that you're going to have to use to take that off so you're going to either have to cut it and get a new belt or try to pull it off uh, without damaging it next i'm going to disconnect all the connectors that i can from up top So I'm going to keep on taking these connectors off. Again, I'm going to do all the injectors on both sides and then disconnect the coils on this side like I did over here with just this connector. And then I'm going to take the alternator uh, power wire off and just keep on pulling off these connectors. And whenever I get this through, I'll come back and show you what I've done so far. So in order to take these injector wires off, I took the coil pack off, the uh, coil pack rack, I guess you could say, off to get better access to it. And all that holds it in are one, two, three, four, five uh, bolts that are right there, all the way across the back. But I took those off just because I wanted to get better access to the injector wires, which are right there. And they have a safety clip. You pull up and you just press in a tab. It's just like pretty much all the other connectors on here. And then right on top, right on top right here, there is a vacuum line or a PVC line that goes into it. And to take that out, you actually have to take it off back there and here's the end it's just another one of them little clips you pull down and push over and pull that straight up and then to get that out you actually have to twist it until it unlocks and it comes straight out but i also disconnected the temp sensor right here it's in the head and i'm going to go ahead and take the intake off next because I did uh, disconnect the injector lines on the opposite side and to do this you can leave the uh, actual injectors in on this one you don't have to take them out but make sure that you disconnect this line right here this goes to your uh, purge solenoid to disconnect that you push down on it and slide it straight back and you can move that out of the way 
and then you can take the fuel line off right here you need the quick release tool you just pop that little metal clip out you just pry straight up on the back and then the quick release tool you just snap it around the line push the line in with the tool and pull straight back on the line and it should disconnect no problem and then after you do that you'll have these little eight millimeter bolts if I can get in there right here you'll have I think it's one two three four I think it's like ten of them and once you do that you should be able to lift the intake up um, to make it easier you can remove the alternator just to give you more clearance which I will do I disconnected the line on the back it's right here it's a 10 millimeter and then you have the regular connector on the front that has a little pull clip in it you just pull it straight back and then once you do that it should just be two bolts on the front and they should be 15 millimeters take those out and pull the alternator right off but I'm gonna go ahead and do that and whenever I get it finished I will come back to you we got the intake off as you can see we got a couple connectors we got to take off should be the oil pressure sensor and the sensor for the AFM on the back and then we're going to be replacing this with one that is from Texas Speed and it is the a delete one and there's your fuel line right there and I just disconnected the vacuum line for the brake booster at the brake booster because it's just easier to get it off right there than it is on the back and you can leave it on it's not gonna make a difference uh, let me show you the intake as well so here's the intake as I said you can leave the fuel rail on with the actual purge valve solenoid you don't have to disconnect this one I did because I wasn't sure if I was going to leave it on or not but here are the bolts as you can see they're right here and this is the vacuum line for the brake booster right there and it does have a sensor on this one that connects to the brake booster line and the reason that I left that on is because this cover right here is a little hard to pry them off I know it's just got rubber grommets on the back but sometimes they can be a little harder to pry this cover off right here and it's just easier with me and you can get it out you just have to push down on the top of the cover a little bit and then it slide right out but as I said we're going to continue on this. I'm going to take the coils off on this side and go ahead and get the valve covers off as well. And then uh, once I get to that point, I'll come back and show you. All right, so we're back. And as you can see, we're going a little bit further. Like right here, I took the let me move this wiring harness. Took this bracket off right here on the driver's side. And the way you do this is there's three bolts on the front of the power steering pump and then one on the side right there you take those three out and the bottom one on the power steering pump you're going to have to use a wrench to get to unless you pull the pulley off but you loosen those up and just get it enough to where you can move it then there's one two three four i think four four or five bolts on the bracket itself and they're all 15s everything's a 15 on here even the power steering pump and on the back of the power steering pump there's this bracket right here but you take that off and your whole bracket assembly will come off after you take your alternator off then we took then we took off the valve covers uh, the valve covers are only held on with four eight millimeter bolts and once you do that the gasket can stick pretty good on these so you're going to need to get a screwdriver sometimes and just kind of pry on it and they do have these little marks right here where you can pry on just a little bit thicker indentions then this one had the crossover pipe on here it had one hose which is right here with this squeeze connector take it off and then two 10 millimeters and a crossover pipe comes off but I did the same thing on the passenger side let me show you the bracket real quick oh and I took the upper radiator hose off but here's the bracket that held the alternator and the power steering pump like I said here's the three bolts 
for the power steering pump and here's one two three four bolts that hold the bracket on itself these two are just the ones for the alternator and then here's your valve covers um, passenger side has the oil fill port but as you can see these are the bolts they are eight millimeters they have rubber uh, grommets under them and there's the alternator right there Next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the uh, rocker arms. I had a brain fart there. I'm going to remove the rocker arm assemblies on these, and they're eight millimeters. And you're just going to go down the line and just take them off one at a time. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep the push rod with the original cylinder that it was on. So I'm going to put it on either a piece of cardboard or a piece of foam that I have and just stick them in there and label which one is which uh, according to exhaust and intake and which cylinder they come out of. I'm going to leave the spark plug, uh, the spark plugs actually in there. I'm just going to pull the boots off of it. And I did soak the bolts down with some coil. Um, because these right here are known to break off in the heads. If you've ever worked on a GM LS engine, the first and the last ones are typically the ones that break off. But there's also a ground cable wire right here on the front. That's a 15 as well. But we're going to go ahead and start pulling each one of these rocker arm assemblies off of each head. And we're going to try to take off the... Uh, exhaust manifolds or unbolt them at least and then that way all we have left to do is break the head bolts loose and you're gonna uh, start in a certain pattern I will show a pattern up on the screen real quick for everybody who doesn't know the sequence but we're gonna throw that up there for you so you know and it'll minimize warping of the head which we are getting these machined anyway but it's just still a good thing to do just so they don't have to take as much off but as soon as I get uh, the rock arms and the exhaust manifolds off I'll be right back all right so we got all the rocker arms and push rods out and we even got the manifolds unbolted and I have to say I may want to go purchase a lottery ticket because not one bolt broke on me and this is the first time I've ever had that happen and that makes this job so much easier but as you can see they are all out the only thing left that we have to do is I have to take this ground strap off the back of the head and take the bolts out for the head and then we can take the heads off like i said i am leaving the spark plugs in we're doing new spark plugs anyway and we're going to be taking them out we're going to go in a circular pattern from the outside in so i'm going to start on these 10 millimeter bolts and the other ones are 15 i'm going to go here and go in a circular counterclockwise position and I'm going to take them out a little at a time. I'm not going to run them all the way out. And I'm just going to break them all loose. And then take them out one at a time after I break them loose. But let me do this right here. And once I get the head off, I'll show you what it looks like. Alright, here we are with the heads off of it. And as you can see, the cylinders were burning pretty good. We will clean these up. I do have to rotate it over and get this one all the way to top dead center because that's the number one piston. And we're going to do that before we take everything else off because I still have to take the water pump off, harmonic balancer, the valley cover, and the front cover on here and then I can take the cam off. Uh, you're supposed to take the oil pan off on these but just to change the cam you don't have to do that and we're taking the lifters out anyway because we have to put different lifters in it because you can't run these if you're running the standard uh, cam with these so like I said a kit that I got come with everything and I will show it to you here in a few minutes but just wanted to show everybody you've never seen what these lifters look like inside of the trays that's what they look like right there and to take them out you just 
take that little 10 millimeter bolt out and you can pull them out and what I'll do is I'll pull them out here in just a second that's what one of the lifters look like they're spring actuated and powered by an oil feed hole and then they just collapse and expand as needed and the reason we are changing these is because these are known to fail and call major engine failure so all we're doing is just putting a standard one back in and it comes with new trays and lifters like i said that's all that is i'm going to show you the heads here in just a second let me throw this bolt back in there so i don't lose it all right so here's one of the heads right here this is what they look like they will get surfaced on pretty much all surfaces intake exhaust even valve cover and deck surface right there i took all the sensors the bolts spark plugs and all that stuff out just so they don't mess them up or you know mess up threads or anything if they hit them or any of that stuff but they're pretty good about that but i just like to take everything out just in case but like i said i'm gonna run them up here in just a few minutes but i'm gonna go ahead and start pulling all that other stuff off too to get the cam ready but i will show you that but that'll be in the next video and once i get this back i'll show you what it's all like putting it all back together but if you enjoyed the video please like subscribe hit that notification bell and if you got any questions comments or concerns leave them down below